So welcome everyone to our webinar today. It's on the CalSAVERS and employer-sponsored retirement plans for business owners, owners webinar. And we are typically doing these in partnership with the Small Business Development Center from El Camino College. And we have Larry, who's from uh, that center on the call. So he'll go ahead and introduce himself and talk a little bit about SBDC. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, as Daniel said, my name is Larry Johnson, and I am the program lead advisor for the Small Business Development Center at El Camino College. And we're proud to be a partner with the chamber and the city of Beverly Hills and being able to offer uh, free consulting services to the businesses and residents of the city of Beverly Hills, in addition to uh, training sessions and uh, training workshops on a wide variety of business topics. So uh, if you are ever in need of any assistance, advice, or business consulting, please uh, contact the chamber. They will put you in touch with us and we'll be happy to work with you. Thank you, Larry. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Connor, who will be one of our speakers today and he is from Runyon Capital. Great, uh, thanks, Larry. And thank you, Daniel. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be here today. I am hopeful that if you can use this material in a constructive way, uh, you will find it to be of value. Um, I'm excited to be here uh, to share with you ways as a business owner to maximize your retirement savings, minimize your uh, tax on your income tax, because uh, you know who doesn't want to save on income tax? And almost equally as important, uh, in a period of time right now when we're faced with a, a national labor shortage, ways to uh, really incentivize and retain uh, the top talent that serves your, your business. Uh, and a great way to incentivize and motivate your employees is to let them know uh, that you care about them, not only you know, from eight to five, but past that by setting up a retirement plan that helps them uh, achieve their goals as well. <clears throat> so many of you, um, I, I know through different events, whether it be uh, in Beverly Hills or, or at SoFi Stadium, but for those of you that I do not know yet, I am Connor Brumfield, as Daniel mentioned. I am with Runyon Capital. We are a private wealth and investment management firm uh, of Wedbush Securities. We are located in Beverly Hills at the corner of Rexford and Wilshire. Uh, and as I mentioned, Wedbush Securities is the, the broker dealer that we trade through and they're the custodian of all the assets that we hold. Um, senior advisor of the firm, Jeff Runyon, uh, he's been in Beverly Hills for over 20 years. He's very active uh, both with Beverly Hills Rotary and the Beverly Hills Chamber. So some of you may know uh, of him as well. But what we do is we help people with uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange traded funds, any investment that is appropriate to meet their goals. We typically serve clients that own their own businesses uh, like yourselves. And that is why today's conversation is so relevant. We help businesses uh, business owners minimize their tax implications, maximize their savings. And that brings us to uh, our topic today, which is Cal Savers. And Cal as in the state of California, Savers as in putting money away uh, for the future. So just a quick poll, uh, you know, and not an actual poll, but how many of you have heard of Cal Savers to this point? Okay, Larry. We'll go with one, but um, what Cal Savers is, is the, the state of California has said that it is no longer an option for most businesses to offer a retirement plan. Um, it is a mandate. And Cal Savers is the legislation that has already begun to roll out uh, for larger businesses in the state of California. Um, on September 30th of 2020, businesses with 100 or more employees had to offer a retirement plan or adopt the Cal Savers state mandated plan. A year later on June 30th of 2021, so a little under a month ago, um, businesses with 50 or more employees had to offer a retirement plan or adopt the Cal Savers state mandated plan. And now you might be thinking, Connor, I don't have 50 employees, this doesn't affect me. But wait, by June 30th of 2022, so a little under a year from now, businesses with five or more employees will have to offer a retirement plan or adopt the Cal Savers plan. So I'm racing to you to get you this information 
because it is coming down the pipeline for business owners in the state of California. Now, if you have less than five employees or if you already have a retirement plan in place, I want to make sure that you stay on and stay engaged um, because there are ways to improve upon existing plans as well as ways to amplify your savings if you have less than uh, five employees as well. Um, but we have a lot to cover today and I wanted to uh, cover the basics of the Cal Savers plan and how it works. And so to help me do that, I wanna introduce a very special guest uh, of Capital Group. Uh, and I just wanna say before that we can use any vendor or uh, record keeper when it comes to providing 401k or retirement plan, um, whichever, is the right, whichever is the right fit for you. Uh, but today I have Gary Bryce of Capital Group, better known as uh, American Funds, the American Fund family, to share some of his expertise because literally, his fingers are on the pulse of what's happening with this legislation and to see what are business owners doing right now, what are they confronting, and how can their experiences help you. So Gary, I would uh, I'd love to bring you in now and, and it's a pleasure to have you speak to members of the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce. Well, great. Thanks, Connor. It's uh, a treat to be here and, and hopefully, like Connor said, you walk away from today's engagement, at least at the very least, having learned something that, that maybe you didn't know or, or perhaps learning more about what you knew a little bit about before. Uh, and really the, the reason why we're here is to give you the best chance to make the right decision for your company. We're not here to, to subscribe to you what is gonna be the best decision. Uh, hopefully we can just give you the facts and, and, and perhaps maybe Connor and Jeff and their team uh, can engage with you to uh, you know, make that decision and, and make the right one for you. You know, as Connor mentioned, Cal Savers came about uh, you know, through some legislative action in the state of California as a result of uh, what started as a federal attempt to mandate employers offer employees uh, a retirement savings benefit. And before the, the state, you know, really got, or, or excuse me, before the federal government got too, mo too much momentum, the state said, hey, I think we can do this on a state level uh, on our own. We know our business is better than you. Uh, and this is what happened. So uh, California is one of several states uh, that already offer a, a plan or program like this. And, and perhaps, you know, from a knee jerk reaction, you're thinking about, uh, you know, jumping ship and, and moving your business elsewhere. Uh, I will tell you that you're just going to kick the can down the road. <clears throat> so uh, currently, there are 45 states out of 50 that either have a plan or are in development of a plan. Uh, there are seven states, California being one of them, where participation is compulsory or mandatory uh, with penalties for non-compliance. Uh, so probably no surprise to you. Um, <clears throat> there are a few that, that since, uh, you know, the, recent, uh, the beginning of this year that were in development that have rolled out their plan. Uh, and really the only place to go where there isn't any plans as of right now are Alaska, South Dakota, Delaware, Alabama, or Florida. So uh, if you're looking to run away, that, those are your five states that, that at least as of today uh, don't have anything going on. So maybe let's get into it uh, and perhaps leave some time for Q&A uh, to, to talk about what CalSavers is and, and, and maybe more importantly, uh, if not CalSavers, then what? So as Connor mentioned, go for it, Connor. You have no, I was going to say, yeah. Um, and, and as you mentioned, you know, this is, is coming. It's here for California, but really anywhere you're looking, it's, it's, it's in the works and it's coming down the pipeline. Um, and Gary, maybe you could touch a little bit on uh, why um, this is happening now, what we're seeing from uh, employers offering retirement plans uh, and, and employees and their ability to actually save and retire and what, what we're seeing in that aspect. Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, interesting, Connor. Uh, north of two thirds of employees in the country uh, have a high, what they have defined as a high degree of, of anxiety with respect to their ability to retire, whether that's you know in the immediate future or even at any time, uh, it's a real problem. It's a real you know you could call it a, a financial pandemic in a way, where employees just don't feel like they're either ill ill or that they are ill prepared or ill suited uh, to to you know save for and plan for retirement. Uh, and, and ironically enough, um, you know in a separate study, uh, <clears throat> ne nearly uh, seventy percent of those folks who filed bankruptcy because of uh, medical costs, 70% of those folks have insurance. And so you're talking about a subset of population that, that just you know, isn't making good financial decisions on their own. 
uh, and really this is you know kind of the government's way of trying to help uh, help the employees really get themselves prepared for retirement. And so uh, you know that's kind of the genesis of why we're here. Um, you know the days of, of going to work for one company and, and staying there for 30 you know or so years and benefiting from what used to be called a pension or a defined benefit plan uh, are, are largely over. Uh, most employee or employees, excuse me, will work at least seven different jobs, seven different employers in their career, and they wouldn't be there long enough to really benefit uh, from a defined benefit plan. And so it's imperative that that benefits like this, CalSAVERS or 401k or whatnot, uh, are maximized because it's going to be their best chance of having a successful retirement. I think you 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 hit it right on the head there. Um, and while retirement plans can be a great vehicle for employees to save for retirement, put money away, um, it's also a very powerful vehicle for the business owner as well. Um, and there are different strategies and structures that will allow you as the business owner to benefit from these different plan styles. Um, and I do want to touch on those as well. But I think it's important that we get into a little bit of the details of, of Cal Savers just to get a, a quick overview of how the plans are structured. Um, you know, as I mentioned, by June 30th of 2022, uh, if you have five or more employees, you will have to have a plan in place or adopt this Cal Savers state mandated plan. Um, and so when looking at the plan, maybe, and Gary, maybe you can help with a little bit of this, but, you know, there's certain structures in the way it's set up. Um, and, and what are you seeing by way of either businesses that have used it and, and what are they thinking um, on, how it's, on how it's benefiting them, their employees and the business owner? Yeah, you know, uh, frankly, Connor, the best description perhaps I've heard about CalSAVERS from business owners who have engaged with it is they feel like they're going to the DMV uh, for their financial life. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know if you want to call that a compliment or, or a backhanded compliment, but um, if you think about the typical California's experience with the DMV, it usually isn't too positive. So I'll tell you, you know, let me give you the positives of CalSAVERS. Explicitly, there are no costs for the employer. Uh, there are also no fiduciary liabilities with respect to the investments, the savings or, or whatnot. Uh, so those would be, you know, two positives. Uh, when you think about perhaps the drawbacks, uh, it isn't really an employee retention or recruitment tool because it's not unique to any one business. And so if you're, if you're thinking about, as Connor mentioned at the upfront of the call, that we're in a, you know, kind of a labor crunch and we're, you know, businesses are struggling to get uh, the appropriate and skilled labor. Uh, if you're out there trying to, to fight for, you know, available bodies, you know, it, being able to say, hey, I have CalSAVERS isn't really going to differentiate yourself from another company they may be considering. Um, it is heavily born uh, the, the administration and the labor to run a CalSAVERS program at a business level is heavily born on the shoulders of whoever at the company is appointed to administer it, which in these smaller businesses, uh, perhaps is most likely going to be the owner. And, and let me explain what that kind of looks like. So 30 days after an employee gets hired, uh, they are to be auto enrolled into the program. Uh, 12 months after that, they are to be auto escalated by 1% uh, annually. Uh, and so you're you're responsible for tracking and maintaining these records and making sure they're done in a timely way. Also, uh, there are no there are no restrictions or or frequency limits on how often an employee can can change their contribution amounts. So you could conceivably have an employee come into your office every payroll period trying to adjust their their contribution amount into the Cal Savings program. So when you when you start thinking about the administrative uh, liability, why well, it's not legal liability, it's administrative liability of running such, such a program as CalSAVERS, perhaps incurring a, a nominal cost for one of a, a, of a complimentary benefit uh, might be a better alternative uh, than, than CalSAVERS. But, you know, again, it's there for, for the companies to say, hey, I'm not ready to make a, a real decision yet, but I need to comply with the rules, which is, you know, what we're, what we're here for. Um, CalSAVERS is a good place to start. I hadn't heard the uh, the DMV comparison, but but I, I, I like that. I think I've heard it as equated to kind of a, a, a school lunch to where you get you get the job done, you're eating lunch, right? You might be a little filled up, but the menu that you're pulling from um, isn't always as nutritional or flavorful as, uh, you know, your favorite restaurant. And so that kind of leads us into these other plan structures that uh, you can 
utilize if you just go through the dialogue and, and, and really have a discovery on what you're trying to accomplish as the business owner, um, what you want to do for yourself and your employees, uh, and, and have the ability to um, motivate, incentivize those top top uh, producing employees and, and everyone that helps make your business run. Um, and I can help illustrate a little bit of this process with a, a couple of slides just to give you an idea of, of what we're looking at here. But um, there's other structures that are available to you, um, you know, as a, a business owner when implementing a, a retirement plan. And um, this is a little illustration to kind of give you a, a frame of mind of what to look for, what to think about when going through uh, that process. And so um, kind of from the top, you know, you can think about it as, okay, do I have employees? And, you know, if you're, you know, five or more, then yes, you do. And, and you will have to have a plan in place in the near term. Um, and then from there, you can think about, okay, am I willing to contribute to my employees' accounts by way of an employer contribution? And that'll take you down two different paths here. Um, and as you can see, 401k is on both sides because there are even more flexibility within the one plan uh, to, to, to kind of make those decisions. But I really wanted to, to show you this as a way to highlight uh, the different options and opportunities that are at your disposal um, and a little bit of the thought process that goes into it. We would like to have more dialogue to make sure that whatever plan you do choose is uh, you know, right for you, but this gives you a little bit of framework as to other options that are out there. And Gary, if you want to supplement anything that I said on that, uh, feel free. Sure. Well, let me just jump in and maybe call out the obvious. I, I think one thing I failed to mention on, on, on Cal Savers uh, is the employees are on their own. So when it comes to choosing investments, uh, which there are five options inside the Cal Savers program, uh, they don't have a financial advisor that they could call and receive any sort of guidance or, or education or, or investment expertise from. Uh, that, that would largely be coming, I would imagine, to the business owner. Uh, and really, it's probably not something you want to take on is making financial decisions for your employees. You know, I think what's the beauty of these options that Connor's put in front of you right here, whether you're talking about the simple, the SEP, the payroll deduct IRA, or the 401k, uh, perhaps a critical component there is that all of these are being shepherded by a financial advisor uh, like Runyon Capital. Uh, you know, with the experience, with the knowledge, with the wisdom to really help not just define, just help you decide what type of plan is best, but within that plan, help your invest, your, your employees decide which investments are best for them. Uh, and so, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the, the, a big missing component that CalSavers just doesn't provide. Uh, that you get with a 401k plan or, or uh, one of these other alternatives. Now, I may also mention uh, from a cost perspective, uh, I told you there aren't explicit fees to the business owner. There are some implied costs that come with administering it and, and, and running it. From the employee standpoint, uh, realistically, you're about on par uh, uh, from a cost perspective. If you were to look at these other options and, and what the employee might pay uh, in one of these types of uh, benefits versus the Cal Savers. Uh, about on par. You could, you could, you know, you might find circumstances where CalSavers is marginally uh, lower cost or marginally a little higher. Uh, but I, I think what I need to remind you is, at least with one of these benefits here, you're getting the services of a financial professional included in that cost, even if you're paying a little bit more. Whereas in the CalSavers, uh, you're paying near the same amount, and, and you know, to, to guide your own journey. And Gary, I, I've talked with a couple of different business owners, uh, and that have plans already existing in place. And when we talk about fees, sometimes they, they don't necessarily see where those fees are coming from. So when you say that on the employee level, uh, the, the price is on par or about the same, can you explain a little bit of where those fees are coming out of and how the employee is actually paying uh, for the plan? Yeah. <clears throat> sure thing. So, you know, let's just talk about Cal Savers. Uh, each investment has an investment expense ratio, uh, and those are those are not things that the employee gets a bill for. That's just taken out of the daily return of their of their investments. But there's also a program with what's called a program charge, uh, part of the CalSavers program. That that would be just added into the investment expense ratio. 
And, and so again, the employees won't see the cost extracted. They won't get any sort of invoice. It would just be, you know, netted out from whatever their, their investment, you know, account re return was. On a 401k side or, or perhaps on a simple or a SEP, um, you, you likewise have uh, expense ratios. Um, and, and it operates, you know, the same way with respect to being netted out from investment returns. The difference there is, uh, is you know, there also may be a program or, or a, a platform charge. Uh, you know, something like I, I can just speak to, to you about what we do at Capital Group. Um, for plans just getting going, we charge $5 per employee per quarter. Uh, and so that might be where you would see maybe just a small, you know, difference with respect to what you're getting. But uh, I could argue that $5 is, is well worth what, what you're paying there. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that's uh, it's important to address just because I've spoken with, with business owners that don't always know that they're even paying fees on a plan. Um, and to, to, to make sure that they understand that typically not everything is, is free in life, but. Um, yep. And then I wanted to touch on the SECURE Act and what was passed uh, in December of 2019 and, and the benefits that are offered uh, to small business owners when they elect to set up a retirement plan. Um, this shows a little bit, but for, uh, business owners that, that do put in a retirement plan, there is a tax credit offered to them. Um, and Gary, if you could just kind of run through um, this and how it looks for a business owner when they start to set up a plan electively. Absolutely. So, you know, I think a couple of things that, that stand out um, that, that I need to mention before we get into the details of, of you know, what the tax credit amount is. Uh, in order to benefit from this, the business has to incur costs. And so any fees that are borne by employees within the plan, whether they are investment expenses, like I mentioned before, whether it was a quarterly fee that was deducted from participant accounts, or if it was a plan level fee that was passed on to employees, all of those fees would be excluded from being able to be covered by the, the tax credit. So the tax credit is solely designed to incentivize, incentivize businesses to establish a retirement plan for their employees and then to help with the cost of, of running that benefit program. And so uh, essentially what happens is you have a maximum allowable benefit of $5,000 per year for the first three years that the plan is in place. Now, in order to, to, to arrive at the actual amount that each, that each company would be you know, entitled to, there's a little bit of math involved. And it's $250 per year per non-highly compensated employee. So let me give you an example. I have, you know, to say I own a company, including myself, I've got 15 employees. Of the 15, 10 of us or 10 of the employees are non-highly compensated as defined by the IRS levels. Um, that would be a $2,500 potential tax credit. Now, in order to get that $2,500 tax credit, I would need to incur $5,000 of cost because it's half of what I, of, of the fees I incur. Okay. So let me give you an example. Let's just say my first year fees were $3,000. Well, I'm eligible for 2,500, but I only paid 3,000. So I would actually get a tax credit of $1,500 each year for the first three years of the plan being in place. So it's a pretty, you know, pretty significant tailwind. Uh, to the business to offset that cost. And, and, and I don't think I need to explain to you the difference between a tax credit and the deduction. Uh, tax credits are incredible. They're wonderful. Uh, but I also tell you that the fees that you do pay are also deductible. So it's almost like a double tax benefit when you think about fees that you're paying as a corporation. Now, I'll remind you that anything that, you know, as you offload fees from the backs of the employees onto the employer, you're lowering the cost and enriching the benefit to the employee, of which usually the business owner is one of the participants in the plan. And so you're able to get a tax benefit as a company and keep your individual costs as low as possible to keep as much money going into your retirement account that that can be. So the tax credit is a, is a, is a great little boost uh, to help employers offset the cost of incurring a, or setting up a plan and running it. Um, you know, and, and, and so I would just tell you that there's there's a little bit of assistance there for folks who may be saying, hey, I'd like to do my own thing. But I'm not really sure about the finances of it. 
the tax credit could be the thing that puts you over the top as far as helping you make that decision. Yeah, and even talking about, you know, some of those expenses, taking them on as a business owner helps to reduce the expenses that participants pay. Um, and if you're a participant as yourself, um, you know, that can help grow the funds that you have uh, earmarked for retirement. So that's, I think, a, a good point to make. Um, and that speaks to the ability to, to customize and individualize a plan um, when, you, when you make the proactive decision of, okay, I want to get ahead of this. Uh, I want to have these conversations to figure out, you know, what would be best for me. Um, so I, I, I think that's important and I appreciate that. Um, I, I feel like we've gotten through a lot in a short period of time here. Um, but, you know, I wanted to say again that this is coming down the pipeline. It's already been rolled out. Um, Cal Savers has already been rolled out for, for um, employers with 50 or more and 100 or more employees. Um, and by June 30th of 2022, so less than a year, um, if you have five or more employees, you're going to need to have a plan in place. And so um, while Cal Savers state mandated plan is an option, uh, I urge you to explore all options and figure out what would be best for you as the business owner to help maximize the money that you're putting away for your own retirement, but also for your employees, um, minimize that tax liability that you pay every year and um, reward those employees that are doing so well for you, uh, especially right now with a very competitive uh, market with a, a, a national shortage in labor. So um, Gary, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you think that we should at this point um, before we open it up? Yeah, so I think one thing I, I failed to mention, Connor, is, is with respect to penalties. So there's deadlines associated yes. with each phase of the CalSavers rollout. Um, and, and as Connor mentioned, we're in the last and final phase, which is applicable to companies with five or more employees. By June 30th of next year, they have to take action. Uh, if a company says, forget it, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to keep operating as it, as it is. Uh, you are subject to a $250 per employee per day fine. So, uh, you know, you just, you know, quickly do the math and, and, and figure out how costly that would be. So if you're thinking about, you're going to, you're going to show the state, you know, who's boss, um, unless you're prepared to write some pretty handsome checks, uh, I would, I would caution you against that. And if you decide that you can, last for 90 days of paying $250 fines per day per employee, the fine goes to $750 per employee per day. So uh, if you've got those finances to pay those fees, you might as well set up an employee benefit plan and, uh, you know, do something good for yourself as well for your employees. That's a great point. I, I was just optimistic that uh, if everyone, if someone's here taking the initiative to, to join us today, then, then they wouldn't even have to worry about those, but that is a good point to make. Um, and I do want to say, too, additionally, if you are a business owner that has uh, an existing 401k a retirement plan, uh, you know, I welcome to review that plan to discover if there are any opportunities uh, to reduce the fees that you or your employees are, are paying on that as well. Um, and I look forward to sitting down with um, any of you to go over these different alternatives that we touched on a little bit today uh, and, and figure out what techniques that we can use to create the most compelling plan uh, for you and your employees. And so I, uh, I'll, I'll reach out and Dan, Daniel, maybe can help me with this, but I'll, I'll have him, uh, I'll get him my contact information and that way uh, he can share it with everyone that's here today. But um, I'll also, I guess if you have a pin, I can, I can leave you my, my phone number as well, but you can, you can reach me at the office, uh, 310-882-682. 6496 and then I'll have Daniel share uh, with you my contact information as well. Call me or email me and I'll call you but uh, I welcome having uh, this dialogue to figure out what's best for you and and ways that we can really amplify what, what you can do by way of retirement planning uh, for yourself and your employees. So I think with all that said, I want to open it up for questions if there are any. Um, and Gary, if you're all right with that, and we can absolutely, uh, and we can open it up for questions.
I think maybe everybody was muted by Daniel, perhaps. Um, oh, that is correct. Yeah, so and there's, there's nothing in the chat box currently. Um, I've been monitoring that, but um, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself now. I guess not. I guess you answered everything already for everyone. That's either a really good sign or or, or not. But um, <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate it. this has been uh, this has been great. I'm so glad to have made an introduction uh, and and share some of this education and curriculum with uh, members of the chamber. Daniel, thank you for having me. Um, Larry, thank you as well. But if anyone has questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I will get your, my contact information to you. Um, you know, we, we help people further than just retirement planning, whether it be uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, uh, exchange traded funds, um, portfolio management. We're at all time highs right now uh, in the markets, as Gary can attest to. Um, you know, and, and the old adage is um, buy low, sell high. And, and right now it's just a good time to have these conversations to, to figure out what the next step will be. So um, please feel free to reach out to me and I look forward to talking with all of you uh, soon.